Hey YouTube, it's DMV Solo Rider here. I know what you're thinking. DMV what? Solo who? That's fine. This is my new channel. DMV Solo Rider. The DMV stands for DC, Maryland and Virginia. I live in the DC metro area and that's what we call it, the DMV. Solo Rider stands for I'm a little antisocial, so I always ride alone. As you can see, in the midst of a global pandemic with the great state of Virginia completely shut down, traffic's as terrible as usual. No surprise there. Actually, I have to say, for the last couple months, it's been the best motorcycle riding conditions ever because there really haven't been many people out on the roads. But anyways, uh, I just started this channel. I really don't know exactly what it will end up being. I think my intent was just to film some cool rides in the area and put them out there and put links to maps with GPS coordinates so other riders could do the same rides. Um, there are some great websites that you can use to find twisties and straightaways and all that stuff but I figured today I'll just tell you a little bit about me my motorcycle riding history and start there so I am coming to you from my 2019 Indian Chieftain Dark Horse it's a big bagger 800 and I think 30 pounds dry, maybe 850 wet. It's a big bike. It's a very comfortable bike. And that's the reason that I have it. I tend to do a lot of long rides where I'm on my bike all day long. So I need a more comfortable seat. I need cruise control. It's got an infotainment system which works really well. I'll be honest with you, I would be happier with just a little docking station for my huge phone and I could just use Waze <laughs> that way at least I get warnings for speed traps and cameras and all that stuff um, I know some motorcycles like Harleys and Hondas are putting CarPlay and Android Auto in them uh, Indian hasn't decided to do that yet which is really a shame because I would hate the idea of someone choosing to buy a Harley because how it works with their thousand dollar phone I mean buy a thirty thousand dollar motorcycle the phone shouldn't be a factor <laughs> anyways that's neither here nor there uh, I love my bike um, it has great torque plenty of horsepower for its size I never find it lacking now granted I've only had it for less than three months got it the first week of March when all this stuff started happening and so I've had more riding time than I probably would have otherwise I've got about a little over 4100 miles on it and I've enjoyed every mile uh, but back to my riding history uh, I actually only got my license for the first time last summer so I think I got my license in June of 2019 and just to add I'm older not old just older meaning not young so probably don't fit any sort of typical expectation of a first-time rider and that's fine when I was a kid, I always wanted a motorcycle, and there was no way my parents were ever going to let me have one. And by the time I got my license at 16 and I was driving, I mean, that's really all that mattered. So my interest in motorcycles just kind of waned over time. Moved on with life, college, work, career, all that stuff. But then a few years ago, I started seeing some new motorcycles out. They were, you know, modern, brand new motorcycles, but they looked totally retro and cool. Like the Indian Scout, which is the first kind of classic styled motorcycle I saw. At least classic to me. 
uh, the Bonneville uh, Triumph Bonneville Bobber just both of those motorcycles looked amazing and once I started seeing them it made me interested curious so I started looking them up online started watching YouTube videos just to see what they were all about and you know once you start searching for motorcycle riding on YouTube you know you get a zillion different channels and videos popping up and I loved it and you know this is probably about two years ago and so you know when I was had some downtime I'd go on YouTube watch some motorcycle videos and just get into it start geeking out on it and I decided uh, about a year ago I think I needed to get my license and try out these cool bikes and I finally managed to do that last June and I'll be honest you know I did the MSF course did my evening of classroom work and then uh, two half days on a little 250cc Suzuki and by the time I was done with the class I actually wasn't all that impressed I, I, I think my main takeaway from the MSF course was I wasn't all that excited to actually ride a motorcycle after all that YouTubing and research and okay you know that was fine I spent a couple days thinking about it it was disappointing but at the same time I mean you know better to know you weren't crazy about it instead of investing a lot of money in something and then deciding you didn't like it so anyways as I'm thinking about all this over days I think I was less disappointed less disappointed that I wasn't riding a motorcycle than I was my reaction to the class I mean think about it you're at the MSF class it's the middle of summer it's hot it's humid here in the DC area it's pretty unpleasant and most of the time you're just sitting on your bike you're not actually riding you know you're on your bike waiting to do an exercise you're on your bike listening to the instructor it just wasn't all that exciting and I think I finally decided it was no way to make a decision about whether I should ride or not just based on that so I decided after uh, about four or five days I needed to get a bike and and just see what it was really like outside of that classroom environment but at the same time I knew just having taken the MSF course I had no business riding a motorcycle on the roads and there was a good chance I wasn't gonna like it so I wasn't really dying to go and spend a lot of money on a bike that I might end up not even riding so I looked into renting and you know Harley Davidson has a rental network across the country and at some Harley dealers you can actually rent like a Honda Rebel 300 500 I don't recall exactly and there's a Harley dealer out by Annapolis that had a Rebel that I could have rented. So I started looking into that. The idea being I'd go and rent it and just sit in the parking lot all day long doing my MSF drills and, you know, not having to wait and just seeing how it went. The problem is I couldn't really find an area real clear, you know, right next to the dealer where I could find a big parking lot and practice. I just knew there was no way I had any business riding on a road to get anywhere. So it really wasn't going to work. I thought, you know, maybe I could go and rent it, like, the crack of dawn, go out there and ride it somewhere far away where there aren't any cars on the road. But that was kind of a pain in the butt and expensive. You know, the idea is I would have gone and rented it during the day, parked it, and then in the wee hours of the morning, I would have gone to the dealership, gotten the bike, and gone and practice somewhere. And it just seemed like a big hassle. So I decided the best thing to do is to buy a bike. And if I decide I don't like it, then I'll sell it. And, you know, I might lose some money, but it was a worthwhile investment. So with all the research I had done in good first motorcycles and how to learn riding, I was thinking of a Honda Rebel. You know, they're pretty affordable. But, you know, a Honda Rebel is nothing that excited me. The, the motorcycle that got my full attention was the Indian Scout. 
just thought that motorcycle was absolutely beautiful. It got rave reviews for its power, its handling, and certainly its looks. So I decided I needed to go and check out an Indian Scout. 